Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hello everybody, welcome back to Quantum Mechanics. Today we're going to start the final part of Chapter 1, the Mathematical Structure of Quantum Mechanics, and that has to do with Dirac notation. So there are really four parts to Dirac notation. The first part deals with vectors and inner products. The second part deals with operators. The third part deals with adjoints. And the final part deals with projection operators and the spectral theorem. So let's get started. All right, Dirac notation. I told you about Dirac in the beginning of the course. Uh, this notation is quite wonderful. And I've given you the original um, reference to Dirac's work where he came up with this notation. I just gave it to you for your own reference and if you're interested. I personally like to look at the, uh, the sources of the people who invented something. And Dirac, it's a very short paper, but um, it's not really required for the course. All right. As usual, we're going to start with a complex vector space equipped with an inner product. That's going to happen over and over again. Complex ve vector space equipped with an inner product. Okay, rather than denote vectors by psi, we're going to devote, denote them in this way. We're going to have a right angle bracket and a left vertical line with the symbol psi in the middle. And we're going to refer to that as a ket or a ket vector. Now this seems a little bit silly at the beginning. Why are we adding this extra complication on top of something that's really quite familiar? You're going to see that a lot of wonderful things are going to happen when we do that. So in this case, with this notation terminology, the state vector of a quantum mechanical system is given by a normalized, remember we normalized everything, everything to make it um, quantum mechanical, and we'll see why that is required later on, a normalized ket. So remember, let's, let's consider a particular example of a complex vector space equipped with an inner product, C2. Remember we often denoted um, base, a set of basis vectors for that by E1, E2, but now in the ket notation it will be ket E1, ket E2. And remember that we define a linear operator on C2 by how it acts on basis vectors and in the ket notation, this would be an example here. Now this is an example we've already seen, if you may want to look back at that. And that's something I do throughout this course. I reuse examples by putting them in new and different, uh, different situations. So here's something very important. We're going to look at the inner product in the dirac Braquette notation. Uh, I said bra for the first time. And it's, I thought I've said ket, but... Uh, We'll, we'll see the bras in a second. Okay, so let's look at two vectors, two kets, in the complex inner product space. Now, this slide, it's careful to, to think carefully about what it's saying here. Okay, we want to look at the inner product of these two vectors. Now, our previous notation for inner product was the curved parentheses, okay? With the two vectors, ordered pair inside the curved parentheses. But now, with the Dirac notation, rather than denoting it like I've highlighted, we have the ket psi on the right, and we have another vector on the left. And that vector we're going to refer to as a bra. Okay. So a vector with an angle bracket pointing to the left and a vertical line and this symbol in between those two is referred to as a bra. So the inner product is 
a bracket or a brocket. And that's kind of where this name comes from. You leave out the C because it sounds better this way. So let's look at a particular example. Let's look at the example on C2 with an orthonormal basis of two kets, E1, E2. All right. Now, we want to consider, we have a basis, we want to consider arbitrary vectors, ket vectors in C2. We'll call them ket psi, ket phi. All right. Well, we know that we can represent those two kets as a linear combination of the basis vectors. And that's what we have right here. The coefficients, A, B, C, D, remember they're complex. All coefficients are complex unless otherwise stated. Now, this is a very important calculation here. What we're going to do is calculate the inner product of these two vectors. But we're going to use the bra cat notation, the inner product of bra phi with cat psi. Okay, now remember, this is the definition. So where am I going with this? Well, I just want to compute this inner product. Because we know how to compute the inner product of orthonormal vectors, I should have said this. The inner the the bracket of bra EI with ket EJ, they're orthonormal, is zero unless I equal J. And we represent that using the Kronecker delta. Kronecker delta because we've normalized them. Okay. Let's look at this calculation. What you do is you plug in the vectors that are given in 138 in the usual inner product notation. And then we go through the usual calculation using the inner product axioms. Now I'm careful to pull out the complex numbers and get the complex conjugate in the correct way. Okay, and if I do that, what I end up with below, so I expect you to go through this calculation carefully, is what? Well, AC bar plus BD bar. But then if I write that out as a matrix, C bar D bar is a row matrix with C and D complex conjugated. AB is a column matrix, column vector, row vector times column vector. Now, relate this back up to where we started. With respect to this original orthonormal basis we chose, it could be any orthonormal basis, E1, E2, we can identify with, we can identify ket phi with the column vector CD and bra phi with the row vector c bar d bar. Now that's interesting because when we talked about the adjoint, when we looked at the adjoint of a matrix, it was the transpose and then we complex conjugated everything. Matrices don't have to be square. That's exactly what we're seeing right here. That's very interesting because that would seem to indicate that the adjoint of a ket is a bra. And that's going to be true. That is true based on this calculation. And we're going to see this in many more examples and solidify it a little bit later on. I'm just telling, showing you this in the context of a simple example. But in linear algebra, simple examples are nice, general examples like this, because they're often very easy to generalize to n dimensions and to more complicated settings. OK, now this next calculation is also a simple calculation, but important. All right, we want to compute, we want to take a ket phi and a ket psi, but we want to let ket psi be acted on by a linear operator. So in our linear vector space, let's just stay in C2. Let's, we have ket psi. Let's consider A acting on psi. So we have A acting on ket psi. That's, that's a vector in the space, right? So we can compute the inner product with of 
cat phi with A acting on cat psi. But now writing out this inner product, this old notation, in this new bra cat notation, we have bra phi with bracket with A acting on cat psi. And this is pr a pretty wonderful um, notation that we're going to see in a lot of different settings. So, if we have our orthonormal basis, remember that if we want to get the, ba the, the, mat the matrix elements of the linear operator A with respect to this chosen basis, it's given by, they're given by this formula, and it's a very nice representation in terms of um, the bra cat notation where this is exactly what it means in terms of the original bracket. So the original bracket, uh, the original inner product notation is still exactly the same but we're just reinterpreting it in this new way. So if we generalize this in some sense to n dimensions Remember this formula? This was, this was when we talked about the matrix representation of a linear operator. Go back and look at equation 1.18, and this is a re, uh, rewriting it in the Brockett notation. So using this relation, the matrix, the matrix elements are really quite simple. The matrix representation, we, we well, I'm just talking about the matrix elements at this point, and they're quite nice in the Brockett notation. Now let's look at a concrete example. Let's go back to C2 for that. Let's take uh, ket phi and ket psi in C2. We know we can represent them as a linear combination of the basis elements, so we do that. And we have our linear operator acting on C2, and it can be represented as a matrix, and these are the matrix elements. Now, this is, ve this is very important to realize what's going on. Remember what ket phi is, or sorry, bra phi is in these, using the um, bra ket notation, it's the row vector C conjugate D conjugate A acting on ket phi is A acting on this column vector and so that's the bra ket notation for this general form here on the left. Once we've chosen a basis and represented all the different objects, the bra, the ket, and the linear operator in with respect to the chosen basis. Okay, so this is a good place to stop for the moment. I'd like you to go back and look at these calculations I've done. There aren't very many, but they're really important to get them down uh, in a very um, in, a, in a way which you can really just whip right through them. So that's it for this particular lecture. Next we're going to talk about operators in Dirac notation. So I will see you all next time. Goodbye.